Hey guys, Andy here, and today on this very special episode of Andy Talks Navy, I'm going to be talking to you about celebrating five years of getting out of the U.S. Navy. Coming up. All right, and we're recording. Hey gang, Andy here. Welcome once again to this very special episode of Andy Talks Navy. Today's episode, guys, I'm going to be celebrating five years since getting out of the U.S. Navy. So, on September 25th, 2015, I signed the bottom line on my DD-214 and uh, left the U.S. Navy and re-entered the civilian sector. And granted, it wasn't under the best of circumstances. As you guys know, I was administratively separated due to my weight issues. At the time, when I was stationed out here in Japan, I was going through a lot of personal stuff, basically, especially with the workload that we had to deal with being stationed overseas. Uh, it's not for everyone, and uh, certainly wasn't for me. And because of that, it caused me to uh, make some really bad decisions, and uh, basically just sat at home most of the time drank, ate a lot of bad food, and uh, subsequently gained a whole bunch of weight. I was going through a lot of really bad stuff in the old head brain that I kept quiet for uh, most of my time there. In a lot of ways, it actually saved me getting separated from the Navy. You know, I, I look back and think on where I was, where, where my headspace was at that time. And yeah, a lot of people online like to make fun of me because, oh, you just you just couldn't hack it in the military. You just had to go and eat them fucking donuts, didn't you, fatty ding dong? But really, if I hadn't gotten administratively separated from the Navy, I think it would have ended a lot worse because there's a lot of times I was feeling very suicidal and I wanted to just basically leap off of my balcony uh, six floors up. That's just not a good, healthy headspace to be in. So I did seek some counseling, but really it, it, it was basically like putting a, a Band-Aid on a gunshot wound, essentially. Once I got the failure from the PRT, the physical readiness test, I was actually given the option to stay in because at the time the physical readiness instruction was looking to change. And because of this, the Navy was willing to scrub one of my past failures which would allow me to stay in the military so long as I enrolled for FEP, which is the fat enlisted people, is <laughs> the uh, pejorative term for it. But it's basically just a exercise program to help you lose the weight and stuff like that. As long as I agreed to enroll in that, then I'd be able to stay in the service. But at that point, I was just completely miserable with life. You know, to me, if things had gotten that bad, they were only gonna get worse if I decided to stay in. So I just decided, you know what? I'm not feeling right right now. I gotta get out. I did what I wanted to do when I was in the Navy. I'm proud to have joined, but I think now is a good time for me to uh, skidoo. On September 25th, 2015, woo, five years ago, as of today, signed my line on the uh, DD-214 and here I am, back in uh, the civilian sector. When I first got out of the military, I had already been accepted into Western Michigan University out in Kalamazoo, Michigan. So I already had a plan moving forward, so I wasn't just gonna get orders to uh, USS Couch, as I called it. I was gonna go to school. I basically treated me getting out as almost just like that, just transferring commands. But instead of going to a ship, I'd be going to school. So it just seemed pretty easy peasy like that, right? But uh, one of the things that I always talk about in terms of the military is that they're really good at teaching you how to go from zero to 60 but they're not very good at all teaching people how to go from 60 to zero. And that's where a lot of these problems with veterans and even active duty personnel tend to uh, crop up, is that people don't know how to turn it down once they've turned it up all the way. For me, once I had some time to kind of think about some of the shit that went on when I was stationed in Yokosuka, then I started getting into this really bad headspace again and just you know it, it took a lot for me to kind of process like who I was now because you know I was just turned 30 and going back to school after uh, I was in the Navy for about five years didn't really know who I was anymore 
and I thought it would be an easy transition, but really once I had some time to uh, mentally unpack, it was anything but. Plus, having been out of the school system for about a decade at that point didn't help either because a lot of these kids were like straight from high school, so they had the, uh, the learning skills and all that kind of stuff down pat. But for me, it was like relearning how to go to school all over again. And so I was already at a bit of a disadvantage. And plus, you know, being a veteran and everything, I felt very isolated being up in Michigan, you know, because I felt like, you know, the age gap was too too wide for me. You know, a lot of these kids were all kids, you know, just leaving mommy and daddy's house for the first time trying to figure it out. And meanwhile, you know, I'm an adult, you know, I've had some experience in this. And to me, it's just another day. And, you know, I've seen and experienced so many things that these kids haven't experienced yet. And it's just hard for me to to relate to them or hang out with them or whatever, because I always felt like the old guy. You know, it's like the, uh, the how do you do, fellow kids? And so I just uh, kept isolated, you know? I, I mean, obviously I kept in contact with friends and family on like Facebook and Twitter and such. But uh, for the most part, I didn't really see a whole lot of people one-on-one -on -one in, uh, in the IRL. And uh, that also helped you know, compound more of my mental health problems, you know, it got to the point where, you know, I was feeling a lot of anxiety attacks where I didn't even want to go to class. Like I'd just be sitting in a ball, just crying for no reason. In a couple hours, I'd be feeling fine. And I'd just kind of look around like, the fuck just happened? Was that me? Eventually decided to take a break from college at the end of 2017 to uh, stay with my parents for a little bit to work on a uh, production company out in Ohio called Leading Line Productions. Um, over Christmas break, we were talking about some things. You know, they were looking to get into the video business, but uh, they didn't really know how to edit. And at that point, I was doing uh, some freelance video editing for some friends and stuff. So I kind of knew a little bit as far as that goes. And plus, you know, I've been doing YouTube videos for over a decade at that point. So I kind of had a an idea of what I was doing as far as that goes. And to me, it just seemed like right place, right time. You know, I was just feeling really burnt out with school, needed a, a break to kind of gather myself again. And uh, here it was. And plus it was a good chance for me to uh, hang out with my folks, you know, especially as an adult. You know, you build a different type of relationship with your parents as an adult versus when you're a kid. And it's definitely something that I don't take for granted. During that time, we had a lot of fun learning how to uh, present things to uh, different companies. Um, our plan was to basically just do like real estate housing tours. So instead of just, you know, taking random little pictures, uh, we would do like full house tours with video and everything. And we're gonna do that as well as do uh, commercials for uh, local businesses. It seemed like a pretty good idea on paper, but uh, the thing was, locally, it was kind of an old boys club where everybody already knew everybody and their networks were already well established and they didn't want to get on this whole newfangled worldwide information super highway interminets. That's for the kids on the Tic Tacs and stuff, you know? So we ran into a lot of, of opposition as far as that goes. You know, during that time, I was also in talks with uh, with one of my old shipmates on board Lassen, just kind of talking about stuff because he had just recently gotten out from the Navy as well. And he got accepted out to Temple University of Japan. And I was asking him like, what? Because <laughs> I thought at that time that the GI Bill couldn't be used for overseas universities, but because Temple University Japan's main campus is in America. It's essentially an American university. So there's no difference between going to the Japan campus versus the American campus as far as financials and stuff go. So it kind of got the ball rolling for me and just kind of thinking like, hmm, you know, just kind of thinking about, you know, maybe I could finally go back to Japan because I never really wanted to leave Japan per se, even when I was stationed out in Yokosuka, I just didn't want to be in the Navy anymore. Thought that, well, you know, I'd just go back to America, get my degree, come back to Japan as an English teacher and figure it out from there. 
But when I saw the opportunity to study abroad in Japan, I was like, hmm, kind of got the wheels turning. But at the time, my uh, GPA was just absolute dog shit. So I talked with my brother, who was stationed out at Fort Bragg at the time. He said, yeah, just come live with me for a little bit, knock some creds out, and uh, get back to Japan, you know? So he was super chill with it. And that's exactly what I did. Went back to college out in uh, North Carolina for about a year. Built my creds up, saved up some money, got accepted to Lakeland University of Japan out in Shinjuku in Tokyo. And uh, I've been here ever since uh, the end of 2019. Honestly, I don't regret a thing. You know, there's some things looking back I kind of wish I did, like obviously applying to either Temple or Lakeland <laughs> right out of the Navy. I mean, shoot, I was stationed in Yokosuka. I could have just took a tra train up and talked to them in person. You know, for me, I think everything happens for a reason. You know, had I got accepted to Temple or Lakeland right away, you know, I might not have had the, uh, the motivation to stay in Japan as much as I do now. You know, one thing leads to another, and I strongly believe that. It was me going back to America and you know, talking to some of my friends that kind of started me on the whole path of freelance video editing to begin with. I don't know if that would have happened had I decided to stay in Japan. I believe now I'm definitely in the right place being out here. I want to continue to stay out here as long as I can. If I'm not able to, if Japan's not in the cards for me, then uh, I want to at least leave here knowing that I did everything I could and uh, I can go back to America, no regrets. You know, do I miss being in the Navy? I, I saw a couple people ask me that a while ago when I made my uh, uh, USS Kurtz video recently. And for me, there are some parts of the Navy that I do miss, namely uh, the camaraderie, that's the main one. Uh, it's something that you'll never get at any job or just about any anywhere else in the world is uh, being stuck in a uh, 500 foot long tin can cruising around on the ocean. It's uh, an experience like no other and uh, get to meet all kinds of interesting people, not just in port, but uh, also on the ship too. Like there's people from all walks of life that I met on board uh, both Kurtz and Lassen. You know, really gave me uh, a new, newfound respect for uh, cultures outside of Mercer County, Ohio and really opened my eyes to the world. And uh, to me, that's, that's priceless. In addition to that, obviously, getting out of Mercer County, Ohio, seeing the world and everything, it was nearly impossible for me to do that where I was at that time in my life, you know, being a, a college dropout with uh, the American recession in full effect out there in Ohio. Like I couldn't even get hired at McDonald's or Walmart or anything, you know, and I didn't have any future job prospects at that time, so. Probably would have ended up in some egg factory or something, and that would have been my life. You know, the Navy's been the best thing that's happened in my life, I gotta say. Even, you know, despite all the uh, the hardships that I went through, um, it's really had a, an overall positive effect on my life. Even five years after getting out, I'm still feeling the effects today. I mean, obviously, I'm still going to school on the GI Bill, so that wouldn't have been a possibility for me had I not joined. Ultimately, at the end of the day, I have no regrets about both joining and getting out in the way that I did. I did what I wanted to do while I was in and got out when I should have. It just felt like everything happens for a reason. So, anyway guys, I think I've rambled and raved long enough about uh, my times in the Navy. So, with all that said, this is the Andy Song. I'm signing for now here at Andy Talks Navy HQ. Thank you guys for all the support over the years. Uh, while I was in and since I've gotten out. Um, it's just been crazy to think that it's been 10 years in that time frame and the fact that my entire Navy career from start to finish has been documented on YouTube. So it's all there, baby. And uh, it's just crazy to, to think about and to go back and look at all those old clips. I mean, even with the USS Kurtz video, seeing a lot of those unreleased clips just brought back so many memories for me. But uh, yeah, just thanks for, uh, for all the love. And as always, and forever, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.